Hello everyone, welcome to T20 Stars, I'm Shane Watson. Today I'm gonna to be talking through what my preparation has looked like over the last couple of weeks in quarantine, and also now as I start to get into my skills aspect to be able to get my skills up and going again. It has been awesome to be able to get out onto the training um, park again, get into the nets with a lot of my CSK mates who are already here. But before I get into that, please don't forget to uh, subscribe to the T20 Stars YouTube channel and also sign up to the T20 Stars newsletter, which is, um, you can sign up to that by going on to t20stars.com because I'm going, to, I'm going to be announcing a competition where you can go into the, you have the chance to be able to win my playing jersey, my CSK playing jersey signed by the whole CSK squad. So I'm going to be announcing that over the next couple of weeks. So to be able to know how to win that signed jersey, please go to the t20stars.com website now and sign up to the newsletter. Okay, I'm gonna give you an idea about what my preparation has been like over the previous couple of weeks where I was in quarantine lockdown in my room. And I went through the exact same routine every day um, just to be able to make sure that I was able to keep my fitness up, I was able to keep my strength up. So what that looked like um, as a starting point was it all starts with my yoga. As I do my yoga before every training session, every game, but in lockdown it was my yoga session. So my yoga session normally takes, takes around 30 minutes. The first 15 minutes of my yoga session is, um, it's called Sun Salute or Saya Namaskar. So what that is, it's a sequence of movements that's been Gosh, it's been out in the um, public domain for like hundreds, thousands of years. And that normally, that movement, that movement sequence normally takes about 15 minutes just to be able to get my body moving, back, uh, back hamstrings, it's my um, glutes, it's my um, hip flexors, everything like that. And then the second 15 minutes of my yoga routine is really specific cricket um, cricket movements, yoga movements. So, um, and I really found those by looking at, you know, through yoga books and finding the most specific cricket poses as well. So um, I'll be uploading those pretty soon um, for you to be able to look at. So it starts with my yoga, that's the first, the first step. Then the second one is just getting onto a back roller. So that's to be able to loosen up my, my back, my upper back, lower back, mid back, um, as well as my glute, glutes, my, my um, my bum muscles, my hamstrings and my calves. So that normally takes around you know, 15 minutes in that as well. I also go through an ankle routine with a TheraBand around my ankle because that's one of my um, issue areas where my, my range of my ankles is not great. So I go through that for about, about 10 minutes as well. And then depending on which day it was, so every second day, I would do a bands routine, which is what I've been doing for the last, <laughs> I've been doing for the last about four or five months since um, you know, all gyms were locked down. I was just exercising from home. So I've got resistance bands and there's, you know, in my hotel room here, it's not a, you know, it's, it's a good size hotel room. I'm able to um, anchor it to whether it's the door, <laughs> whether it's the door of the hotel room, whether it's um, the uh, legs, the legs of my of my desk in my room as well, and I anchor these resistance bands. So I do an upper body, I do a um, core and a lower body in in about 30 minutes. And I'm actually I'm guided by it's called the Tom Brady method. Tom Brady is a you know one of the most incredible NFL quarterbacks that's ever been, and he's got this philosophy around um, movement patterns and and resistance bands are a huge part to it. So not only do I get some strength with um, it's 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, going through the routine, but it's also a cardio workout as well. So I'm getting two aspects to, to, um, to my workout, which, is, which I love. Again, I'm gonna be um, uploading some videos on, on those various movements, which are more, which are cricket specific as much as they possibly can be as well. So it goes to my um, resistance bands. So in the, in the day off where I don't do my resistance bands, so I do that every second day, I'm doing a, one, a skipping routine to be able to get some load into my, my calves, especially my ankles. So I'm doing uh, 60 seconds on, 60 seconds off, doing that 10 times, just to, as I said, get some load into my calves while I haven't been able to run because there's no room to be able to run in my room. And then with that, as well as that skipping routine, I'm doing like shadow boxing, like a shadow boxing routine. 
So, uh, and again, that's, well, that's um, 10 rounds, one minute on, 30 seconds off, and that's um, different, that's uppercuts for, for, one, for one minute, it's um, some combinations for, for one minute, it's sit-ups punching for, for a minute, and also just some other combinations as well. So, again, I'm gonna upload those so you can actually see what they look like, but that really gets my heart rate up. That gets my heart rate up to 150, 160, um, consistently, so I'm getting a good workout. So that's my fitness sort of regimes in between like my strength sessions, which was every second day, and then my cardio, uh, which is the skipping and, and my boxing sessions as well. Then after that, I'm doing a walk. I'm just, I was walking up and down. <laughs> I was walking up and down my room, which is about a uh, hallway, which is, I don't know, probably seven or eight meters, and just walking up and back. Uh, I was doing that, I'm doing that for 90 minutes. So the only way to make that time go fast is um, put a podcast, um, get my earphones in, put a podcast on. I've been listening to um, the How I Built This podcast, which is just phenomenal about founders, uh, founders of some of the most successful companies ever in throughout the world. So I'm learning, trying to learn as much as I can about the business side of life. And I find that fascinating. So that makes the time go very fast. So that's what my fitness regimes really look like in, in quarantine for the two, two weeks of lockdown, lockdown. And I feel like, you know, the last couple of days since I've got out onto the training ground, I'm in, I'm in pretty good shape. Now I'm going to the skills, the cricket skills side of things. Um, because I've been playing these T20 tournaments for the last four years without you know, consistently sort of playing international cricket and sort of coming into an IPL, for example, I've had to learn the hard way um, on a number of occasions how to be able to get my skills up to a standard to be able to be as close as I can to my best after having a big, big layoff. And of course, this is you know, crazy circumstances because of the, how much the world's changed because of, because of you know, COVID hitting the whole world. So this is you know, people having five months of not playing. But there's a, two things that I'm really focused on when, when I'm getting back into my skills side of things. One is the technical side of my batting. So it's my technical checklist that I'm, I'm working through every single ball. And you can, um, you can have a look at my, my T20 uh, batting checklist, the T20 batting masterclass, which is on T20 Stars YouTube uh, channel. Um, the link will be down the bottom, which you, can, which you can click on. So that gives you an understanding of my technical checklist that I'm working through as I'm getting my skills. And that's whether I'm playing consistently, but even more importantly, when I haven't been playing for quite a bit. So I'm trying to get my skills up to a stand I possibly can. So that's my technical checklist. But the other thing that a lot of people actually really don't realize how incredibly important it is, is my mental skills and making sure that I'm training my mental skills to get them where they need to be as, as best that I can going into the first game. And for me, that is the right intensity, every ball that, every ball that I face in the nets. And that takes time. Like the last two training sessions I've had, I've found that as challenging as the technical side of things. Because in the nets, you're getting ball after ball consistently. There's no real breaks in between balls like there is in a game. And also I'm trying to get some as many balls as I possibly can in as well. So I've been having probably around eight balls before then I'm swapping with whoever I'm batting with and they bat for eight balls. But between like six, seven and eight balls of that round, I'm very inconsistent with, especially with my intensity in my mind that I need when I'm at my best, when I'm batting my best. So for me, that's being have like really strong intent, really aggressive intent to be able to then just react and trust my instincts. Uh, if I'm a little bit tentative or I'm, like my energy's a little bit down that ball, then that's when I'm that's when I'm not at my best. It doesn't matter what my technique's like, my my intent my intent's down, so my ability to be able to execute my skill is going to be down as well. So that's one of the big things that I'm working on. Actually, talking to Stephen Fleming um, last night was I actually need to cut those the, every round. I've got to cut those balls down to maybe five or six balls just in the moment while I'm building. I'm really building my mental skills muscle because your brain is a muscle and I've got to you know, really build that up again as well for my concentration and the right intensity. So, um, so I'm gonna, the next few training sessions I'm gonna be, gonna be um, going to, I'm gonna cut those amount of balls I have in every round so I can have the right intensity and maintain that for those you know, five or six balls and then go out and reset again. So those, like, people probably don't really 
appreciate how important the technical skills are, yes, to be able to get that right, especially the reflexes, and that's one of the big things if you haven't batted for a while, is getting your reflexes to be able to react correctly, quickly, again. But then it's understanding what the right mental space I need to be in to be able to then be able to react to the best of my ability as well. So that's what I'm always working on. I'm, I'm very, very conscious of, and again, like the last couple of days, and again, talking to Stephen Fleming, that's what I need to work on over the next couple of weeks and the next few sessions in particular to be able to make sure that I am training my mental side of things and the my mental muscle, mental skills muscle, um, as well as just like my technical sort of physical movements as well. So those are the couple of real crucial things from a technical skills batting wise that I'm really that I'm really conscious of and working on. And I know if I get those right with a couple of weeks to go before the first game, I'm gonna be in the best position, the best place that I possibly can be with the preparation that I've had to be able to hopefully hit the ground running in the first, first game of the IPL. The last thing that I'm really conscious of is getting my shoulder right to be able to throw again. After not being like been throwing for a couple of weeks in particular while I've been in, um, in quarantine, I have to make sure I'm getting the right amount of throwing in my shoulder again to be able to make sure that I don't, my shoulder doesn't get sore because I've just tried to throw too hard in the first game or I haven't got enough throwing in my shoulder. So, so I do that by gradually just building back into it. Like the proper throwing technique, which is over the top, being very conscious of my, my lines, throwing directly through the target, stepping straight through from my side on position, stepping straight, straight through to my target and following right through. So that's the one, one component is the proper throwing technique over the top. But the other two things that I, that I do is you don't always have a chance in a game to be able to throw with a proper technique. Of course you're trying to do that every time because you're making sure, well you're trying to save your shoulder so you don't hurt your elbow or throw off balance and you know, hurt your shoulder because you're throwing off balance. But sometimes in a game, you, just, you don't have control over when you're throwing and you've got to pick up the ball and throw as quick as you can. So the one thing that I do work on is throwing in two different um, release slots. So, and, and I'm doing this very gently to start with. I'm doing it so I'm not overloading my shoulder or my elbow because you know if I hurt that then I'm then I'm in trouble. So I'm throwing more sidearm. So um, that's one release point um, slot that I'm sort of working on. I need to get my shoulder used to throwing, but like potentially with sidearm if I have to throw it quickly um, and get the release of ball quickly. So I'm throwing with the sidearm sidearm. Um, release point and then also I'm throwing down real low like directly off the ground so I'm doing that and again it's gently I'm starting that very gently so I'm getting my shoulder and my body used to throwing from in the end it's three different release points so so then when I have to come into a game I have to throw off balance if I need to if there's a run out opportunity or something like that then I need to make sure that my shoulders used to throwing in a couple of different slots so I don't hurt myself in the game when I try to throw in a position that I haven't been practicing. So that's really important for injury prevention, especially to be able to manage my shoulder, to look after it so then I don't hurt it, so I can throw at full power as I possibly can in a, in a game and consistently throughout a tournament. And the other thing that I need to mention as well is just getting my body used to running again. Yes, I run, now I'm very specific with my running. So I'm only running the distance that I, that I need to run. Obviously I've had a lot of soft tissue injuries, calf and hamstring injuries in the past. So I am pretty gun shy about pushing things too far, which could increase the chances of me getting injured. So I'm just getting my body used to running the shorter distances that I'll, like the furthest distance that I'll need to run in a game if I need to run out to a ball in the, um, you know, run out to the boundary, but then running between wickets. So even the, in the lead up to me coming over to Dubai, the main running that I have been doing is running between wickets, running ones, running twos, running threes, and doing fitness in that regard. So I'm getting my body used to running between wickets, that fitness. With my pads, I'm running with my pads, gloves, my helmet, everything on. So I'm getting my body used to running with the full equipment, and that's been my fitness. So I'm getting my body used to doing what I need it to do in a game. So I'm less chance of getting injured. So that's been really important in my preparation as well, and it's gonna be very important over the next couple of weeks in the lead up to the, the first game of the IPL as well. So everyone has slightly different ways of doing things, and this is just really what's worked for me. 
over the last four years by playing this the in the you know on the T20 circuit. That's what I've found. These are the things that I've found have worked best for me, especially when I've had breaks in between tournaments and I haven't been able to consistently go from one tournament to the next. So that's what I've found has worked for me. So I hope you've got something out of this, even if it's something very small. But again, please don't forget to subscribe to the T20 Stars YouTube channel so I can continue to, to build this. I love nothing more than being able to get all of my knowledge and information out to everyone. So um, yeah, please continue to subscribe and finally, don't forget to sign up to the T20 Stars newsletter to be able to understand how to be able to go into the draw to be able to win my CSK playing jersey signed by the whole CSK squad. I'll see you all very soon.